as of 2016, about 80% of people in genetic studies were of European descent. Science Magazine released this article right here. And uh, right here, they're discussing the misuse of African DNA by this British genetics lab, Welcome Sanger Institute. Some whistleblowers uh, privately accused these people of commercializing gene chips without proper legal agreements and the consent of hundreds of African people who donated that DNA to develop the chip. Janina DeVry specializes in bioethics. This person is correct when they say that what happened was clearly unethical, full stop. And of course, one of the whistleblowers was fired along with a planned study of 100,000 Africans that somehow that study has now come to an end. I said, wow, 100,000 Africans would reveal a lot. So of course, they're just gonna decide that they're not gonna do that. They're absolutely right right here when they say that the tragedy and the scandal is that the people who will pay the price are Africans. We see right here that it costs about $800 to $1,200 per person to sequence their entire genome. And so what researchers do is use gene chips as a cheaper shortcut to look at uh, various areas that they need to look at and where variation might be expected. I don't think that we should be using shortcuts, especially when the area that you're going to is the actual root of the phylogenetic tree. So these gene chips lower the cost of all of this to less than $100. And so we see now that they plan on sequencing the African genomes with a 99 cent store DNA test. But in order to make these chips, they need to be designed based on entire genomes from a given population. And so we can see for ourselves that they need to use a real genome sequencing process before they can make the 99 cent store of DNA tests. We see right here that it says they wanted to capture more of the variation on the continent. Now this variation is something that the Euro critics are always acting like they have their heads stuck up their ass and saying, what variation are you talking about? They were going to use these new chips to study the genomes of up to 100,000 Africans looking for genetic insights into things such as heart disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure. You know what? How about ancient history? Why? Because the data could benefit Africans and because populations in Africa are more diverse than other populations. And we also might contain genetic variants. You don't gotta tell us twice. Genetic variants that are missing or rare in other places of the world. Of course. OCA2 or HERC2, octatanian strand 2, which gives them blue eyes, show the degeneracy of what they come from. So they are mutants that come out of Central Asia that went into Europe. That's what the country, European come they from. Where... They say right here that this could help researchers understand the mechanisms behind common diseases. And I'm here to tell you guys that this could help researchers understand the mechanisms behind ancient history. This Sanger company, they get involved in some sort of uh, financial dealings without uh, fully consulting with their partners. And you guys can read about all that. I have the link in the description below. So the DNA that they were using, if they were to use this for anything, it would uh, bring into question whether any of this is legally or ethically questionable. What we need are some more black academics out there, geneticists, who are gonna help us use this for ancient history. Not only that, for current history. They also change, they, they're addicted, they get addicted to shit quick. That addiction is due to the Neanderthal gene variant because Neanderthals were very mimicky. They were, they were, they were kind of like, they, they Fox P2 genes was fucked up. We see right here that they've already used one of these chips to screen 60,000 Africans to find gene variants linked to disease. Charles Rotimi is absolutely right when he says right here that we're just gaining traction when it comes to the African genome. Let's remember that when the Euro critics are giving us another lecture about African DNA. Regarding this Sanger company, uh, they released a report in October of 2018 saying they didn't bully anybody in the workplace and that there was no wrongful exploitation of scientific work, except that all four whistleblowers are now gone. One of them says that she was fired for bringing the company into disrepute. Why? Because she exposed them. But I gotta go on research. I gotta go on research. I gotta go on research.
This right here is from Nature Magazine, and we see for ourselves that the geneticists have devoted their attention almost exclusively to the small subset of Africans that migrated north to Europe tens of thousands of years later. And a handful of African genomics projects are now only beginning to address this imbalance. Notice how they say, address this imbalance. Notice how they say, address this imbalance and how it's only a handful of projects that's doing this right now. 300,000 years of genomes and there's only a handful of projects. But well, we get stuff all day linking something to Caucasian people all the time though. You see, when it comes to black people, African people, whatever you wanna call them, it's a lot, a whole lot of mixing around and going all over the place with these people for the past 300,000 years. Take the Fulani, for instance. You can find them from coast to coast. Alfred Najamshi is a neurologist at a university in Cameroon. And he tells us that some of the Fulani, they want, you know, some information about their own genetics so they can try and figure out where they've been walking around to. And he tells this story about one Fulani man, a uh, Fulani old man who recalls walking 3,000 kilometers from Senegal to Cameroon uh, with his parents. And that sounds about right to me because, you know, Fulani people, they walk around all over the place. So that makes perfect sense to me. This quote right here says it all. There's a literally nothing in Africa that is not possible since we have no ideas what humans were doing on the continent 5,000 years ago. Mentos, the fresh maker. And that's what I've been seeing on this channel since the day I showed up, that these people have no idea what they're talking about. There's no evidence for what they're talking about. Also, you guys know nothing about African DNA. And there, it's like the guy said right here, I like this quote right here where this genetic epidemiologist tells us that there's nothing in Africa that's not possible since we have no idea what humans were doing on the continent 5,000 years ago. You know, that was Egyptian times, right? She says there's literally nothing in Africa that is not possible. And we see the tagline at the top is endless possibilities. Yep, that's you guys. They're talking about you. You know that, right? Let's be more specific here. Nearly one fifth of the genetic variation that they uncovered in this nature study right here has never before been reported. And so here we are in modern times, the times where we are walking around all together and one fifth of new information that they get from African genetics has never been reported before. And again, I've been telling you guys this since I showed up on this channel that there's all kinds of stuff about us that they don't know. And so it easily allows them to create their own story about us with the less information that you have available. So the findings for that study uh, suggested that there was intermingling uh, 30,000 years ago between the Hadza and the San in Southern Africa and the Baca in Central Africa. So they're over here talking about Southern Africa and Central Africa 30,000 years ago that uh, they're suggesting that, you know, there was some sort of intermingling amongst hunter gatherers. And all of that aligns with signals of mixed Hadza and San ancestry in DNA that they extracted from 2,500 to 8,100 year old human remains. This is when the Euro critics step in and they say other researchers want to see further statistical analysis of the data before they accept the notion that the Hadza, the San, and the Baca overlap geographically. I'm gonna ask your question. Do you have proof or a method now, to show and prove? Of course, we always need new data, but you know, automatically though, when it comes to anything African, we need to remember that they always use this type of language before they accept. I'm telling you guys right now that we don't need permission from them anymore. All right, you guys got to stop letting them do that. All right. And uh, this lady, Dipti, she says that earlier studies have given little indication that people from these groups mix together. And the reason why is because there's all kinds of stuff that has never been reported, never been seen before, you know? And they start off with the European model by studying all types of non-African people and adding them to the mix all the time. And we saw it right here where they basically admit that they have a Eurocentric model. And so we see no indication of that before, but you see that whenever they just start studying a little bit more, start pushing, you know, the goalposts a little bit further, all of a sudden it starts revealing things that they don't want. Creating a phony hierarchy where you have certain sections of Africans that never knew each other in life and don't even know how each other look. You know, they're always coming up with these own little sections. They have their little favorite Ethiopian section. They have their North African section. They have their Negro lands. You feel me? Dipti 
she uh, finishes that with, there's literally nothing in Africa that is not possible since we have no idea what humans were doing on the continent 5,000 years ago. And, you know, there's a lot of meaning in that statement right there. All right. And so I just wanted to take this time, you know, to remind you guys not to let the Euro critics ever give you, and I'm talking to you, any sort of lecture on African people, DNA, because, you know, these people are constantly running around giving us a lecture. Like, why the hell are you going to go over here and give me a damn lecture? When you, first of all, you have no idea what I'm, what you're talking about in regards to my ancient homeland. And we don't even know where the hell you came from. What you might want to do is jump on the mic and go find out where the hell you came from. So they are the same species. They're just degenerate. Yep. If they wasn't the same species, we wouldn't be able to reproduce. And like people like Obama, Lenny Kravitz, all these cats would be sterile like the Liger. That's what makes them the same species. They're just degenerates. They're mutants. Plus they mix with archaic humans like Neanderthal, which gives them a high level of osteosporosis. Uh, autoimmunity disorders, certain types of lupuses, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes. White people are, have, are more prone with type 1 diabetes being born with it than black people catching type 2 from eating high carbs, sugar, and all that other crap. Because of the Neanderthal gene, you can look this up. Some of the things we can take away from this is that a single study found that nearly one-fifth of the genetic variation uncovered in that study has never before been reported, has never before been seen. We also know that the geneticists have devoted their attention almost exclusively to the small subset of Africans that migrated north to Europe tens of thousands of years later. And they have also admitted that they need to address this imbalance. And Charles Rotimi is right. As a genetic epidemiologist, when he says that we're just gaining traction when it comes to the African genome and Africa, period. So to come full circle, there's always something, you know, a little bit fishy, a little bit shady, a little bit janky. We have more articles we can read like ancient genome studies grapple with Africa's past. Why are you grappling with Africa's past? African scientists call for more control of their continent's genomic DNA. Hmm, sounds familiar. All right, so remember that the next time the Eurocritic wants to give you another damn lecture about something African, it give you a lecture about yourself. Thank you.